Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Mr. Robot Season 4 Episode 11 Exit. Uh, this video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Mr. Robot. So let's start with a spoiler warning for Mr. Robot up to Season 4 Episode 11. If you haven't seen up to this point, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, some things will be spoiled for you. A lot of things, a lot of things will be spoiled for you if you haven't seen this episode, so don't watch this video if you haven't. Anyway, they did it. <laughs> they finally did it. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm really, I haven't heard anyone else's opinion on this episode yet, and I'm very curious to see what other people say, because me, myself... I as really dependent on how they handle the finale. Uh, I'm sure I am almost 100% certain that some people are, are like angered and throw up their hands and angered and declare the show a failure or pissed off or whatever. I'm not one of them. Uh, <laughs> not at all. But anyway, before I get into the whole parallel universe of it, let's 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 talk. Let's start at the beginning. Start at the beginning of this episode where we get um, Elliot's uh, sort of goodbye to Darlene. And I thought that was really powerful. I, I was almost expecting him to um, to tell her about their father right then and there. Um, but but he didn't. Uh, but it's it was really, I think it was a good payoff. Like, because we never really see Elliot sort of outwardly appreciate Darlene as much as he did there. I mean, maybe there were times before, but really, he really realized how important uh, she was to him. And, of course, later on in the episode when he's uh, talking to White Rose and he tells about people he cares about, um, it kind of comes up again. So, I love that scene. That was powerful. Uh, but also before that, we got the whole thing with White Rose that continued from the cliffhanger in episode 10, where the police were knocking down White Rose's door. And we find the continuation of that, or the FBI, or whoever, that they're all been just killed, and uh, White Rose just walks out with their army. Now, I gotta say, maybe I'm wrong, but my initial reaction is to find this unbelievable. Like, I don't believe this, that that they would be able to... Because there was, like, this huge storm of FBI or whatever they were uh, storming, like, him, like ramming down White Rose's home because he shot a man or Zhang, you know, White Rose, she, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Zhang shot a man in cold blood in front of everyone to see and also... You know, he's been exposed as White Rose, as we saw in the previous episode. Uh, it's funny that news um, that Darlene was watching in the previous episode didn't mention the fact that they just killed a bunch of FBI agents and that she was at large. Or maybe it didn't, I just missed that. Maybe it was sort of subtle, or maybe it was hinted in there, but they cut away from it so you wouldn't see that part of it. I don't know. I had to watch the previous episode to see. But anyway, um,. That was, yeah, I don't buy it because with someone that high profile, especially after they killed all the FBI agents sent to capture them, the, the, all the law enforcement agencies, and I dare say maybe even the military, would go after them at, at full force. Like, they wouldn't just sit idly by and just let her go to Washington Township on you know, on track or whatever. Now you could argue, oh, it's White Rose. She has the white, the resources, of the of the Dark Army, and she could hack and, and make it so she can get to Washington Town so undetected. Okay, maybe, maybe, but I still don't think she would have gotten away from that neighborhood, that house. Like they would have, they, they couldn't. I think the amount of men that they should have sent should have been too much for the, for the, her goons to kill. And, and I don't know if I saw any of her goons get killed either. They were implying all the dead bodies were FBI. And how, how, how were they able to kill them all and not have any of them? I don't know. 
maybe I'm overthinking this, and maybe I'm, other people tell me I'm completely wrong. I don't care. This is really how it was my initial feeling. It's still my reaction to it. Is I kind of have to suspend disbelief that she'd be able to get away with it because I don't buy it. But it, you know, the 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 show needs to happen, you know, <laughs> because the movie can happen. Like, it, yeah, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so then we get Elliot going to Washington Township. I think this is the first, we saw Angela go to Washington Township before. I don't know if we ever saw Elliot do it. And it was, so it was sort of the, had that homecoming feeling to it. But then he's walking to the power plant. And I love how this kind of subtly imply like all these cars like going through red lights and like speeding away really fast and, and at first I was like what what the hell at first I thought it was the show just being weird but then you know as they got to the he got to the power plant and there was no guard in there and the door was just left wide open all the chairs on the ground uh <laughs> I don't know uh, they, they just subtly imply that yeah something happened and of course it's white rose went in and kill everyone so she could operate the machine but the way they film Elliot it seems like he's just oblivious just like he doesn't care and he was actually surprised like because he does and does his hacking thing and he looks over and he sees a dead bodies and he's shocked whereas like what did he think happened why do you think everyone was running away really fast why do you think there was no guards there and the doors left wide open and there were chairs turned all over i mean why did he think that would, would be the case he knows that white rose has her project there that's very very important to her and uh when she, he finds the chaos who the fuck does he think calls the chaos but whatever <laughs> I, I i'm not saying this to say it's bad i actually it's interesting that ellie would be that oblivious and maybe they and it's, it, they actually expected us the viewer to be oblivious i don't know but it was kind of like subtly implied like they didn't hyper focus i, I really liked it actually I thought, I thought it was pretty cool and then we got the return of sandwich guy <laughs> when, when i saw him i was like hey it's sandwich guy and he's eating a sandwich <laughs> Oh, oh that's so funny he was just like uh you're not supposed to be here like, <laughs> i know the dark army they just killed a bunch of people and they're very despicable and it's very disgusting they're terrorists but it's a sandwich guy <laughs> i love a sandwich guy uh, <laughs> anyway uh <laughs> So they took Elliot into a... That's what I call him, the sandwich guy. I don't know if, if people had different names, because some people might argue it's not actually a sandwich. Some people thought it was like a, a sub or something. I don't know. It's a fucking sandwich. But then he's eating a sandwich. When does he never not eat a sandwich? That's, that's kind of... It's like a gag. It's like a running gag that shows do because obviously he's not eating sandwich all day long but whenever he appears on the screen he's, yeah I don't know I love sandwich guy but anyway <laughs> um, so they take LA to White Rose and the room is a very reminiscent of the talk she had with Angela and it really makes me want to go back and watch that scene with Angela. I was hoping that they would clear up for sure what she showed Angela to make her be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. um, but the, not, I mean, you could infer that it was somehow showed, maybe showed her a glimpse into this parallel universe or whatever. Um, but there weren't clear, and then, like, yeah, the whole thing was very reminiscent of that scene. I kind of hope they tie that up more. Otherwise, we might just have to infer stuff. Whatever it is. Because there's not just the way that the room looked. And how, you know, with Angela, they had a girl who looked like her. And they had a lot of her uh, her own items that reminded of her childhood. And so they did the same thing with Elliot. They had a book that he read as a child. And, and other things in his room were reminiscent of his childhood. And he's just like, this isn't going to work. Um... <sighs> But this may be... I hope this has greater meaning. But we'll see in this next uh, few episodes if they clear things up. I think uh, it would be much better if it did have meaning. But anyway, we see that there's even a fish. Just like there was with Angela. Although, I think they 
imply that's the same fish because it says his name? I can't remember. Pardon me for not being such a huge fan of <laughs> Mr. Robot. I can't remember the name of this fish from season one. But I think he said it was uh, implied it was the same fish. Um, so... It had that that and it had the game as well, similar that Angela had to take this game with you and had to do these scenarios like there's a door, what do you do with the door? Is there a key in this case is like there's a barrel, what do you do with the barrel? And I love how like the plant was going to explode like uh of course why I sort of gloss over the fact that white Rose shot herself in the head I was. To be honest, I was halfway expecting her to just come back to life. And that would be showing Elliot the weird thing. But it turned out not to be the case. I mean... And what? Because I think I'm still very perplexed about how she was said to Elliot, I want to show you the same thing I showed Angela. But obviously, she didn't do that same. Because she didn't start the project and have the... I mean, are they implying... That, that when Angela was in season two, this is the same place that she had taken Angela to Washington Township and had somehow maybe operated the device on a minor level. Because I think I remember from, again, I need to watch that episode again. But I think I remember like there being a bunch of pictures with cards blocked out of them just like there was in this episode. So maybe they are implying that this, it doesn't just look like the same place. It is the same place. Maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. I've, it's been a while. Some people who've seen season two more recently probably be able to say. But anyway, um, cause I thought they took her to a neighborhood or whatever, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so yeah, they, um, it's gonna, I don't know what White Rose means by, um, I'm gonna show you the same thing because, Obviously, she didn't, like, do the exact same thing with the whole plant meltdown and created the parallel universe or whatever. Not created, but whatever. We still don't know. Um, but, yeah, I'm still... But, yeah, the whole thing about the... the it, it was funny that Ellie was sitting there playing a game with Mr. Robot. <laughs> and actually, I forgot to mention earlier in the episode, Ellie said his goodbyes to Mr. Robot as well. Like, Mr. Robot's like, I can't come with you. But then, of course, when their lives are in danger, he shows up again. And again, we get the weird shit because they're like, oh, we need the code to the door. And Elliot picks up the phone and it gives them the code to the door. <laughs> Which is... Uh, I don't know, man. And then White Rose... It's, it's all weird. I hope this is all explained. Like, I mean, you can kind of gather why White Rose shot herself in the head because she knows that the this parallel universe is going to be reset anywhere. So I don't... I don't know. I'm still... Uh, the finale is going to have to clear up a lot of things. I hope they do. I hope they don't leave too much like ambiguous. It will probably irritate me if they do. But anywho... Um, so, yeah, Elliot plays that weird game thing where the plant's, like, <laughs> about to go melt down. And Mr. Robot's urging them to leave, but I think we see how quickly we see it, it actually melts down, I don't think Elliot would be able to get away in time. Uh, as we've seen with, if you ever watched Chernobyl, <laughs> the sort of radius area to not die from radiation would be, um, he would never get that far in, in that short amount of time. So... Actually, him staying there and trying to stop it from happening was probably the better bet. But, um, that's not what happened. Like, as soon as he pressed the button, they said that he would read the note from a friend. Then the, all the noise stopped, so you assume it wasn't going to happen. But then everything started blowing up. And then we get the flash... And then we see Mirror Elliot, or the alternate Elliot. Uh, now, we, this is interesting, the way they structured this, because there's, I looked, I checked, I was like, how much time is there left, including commercials? Uh, there was 20 minutes left, and I was like, huh. So, for 20 minutes, they were t taking us in this alternate reality where Elliot was like, clean, you know, clean cut and it worked at all safe. He was the I almost expected to see Gideon but he, no, he's the Gideon of this. He's the one running all safe and he's trying to pitch something to F Corp instead of E Corp and he's gonna marry Angela and again this is kinda 
made me think of that that dream sequence everyone's bringing up from season one where Angela were, was acting like Ellie proposed to them. And now we see they're getting married. Maybe that... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that was foreshadowing something. So... And, and his dad's alive, and he's really nice. I do get the impression, the very strong impression, that his dad never molested him in this particular universe. And so they have a happy family. Darlene wasn't born. I gotta say, I do think that was a bit uh, clunky dialogue when Angela was like, Oh, you were so a lonely child. Oh, I mean, nobody said that's an obvious way for them to go. Hey, Darlene doesn't exist in this universe. But anyway, so if you're like me, I was thinking throughout this whole sequence that this was Elliot. And he kept getting headaches and he talked about migraines. And there was a ground shaking at first. So I assumed that this was Elliot experienced his other life. And his original life was like trying to break three free. And that's why I kept getting migraines. But the ending of the episode suggests something different. Uh, it suggests that that's that is alt that is not our Elliot. That's alternate Elliot, and he meets our Elliot at the end of the episode. Um, is this could possibly be in his head a Mr. Robot type situation? So maybe it is correct that this is Elliot somehow combined i mean because that would go more along the lines of what white rose was saying because she's saying like she killed herself and she thinks everyone who died would be alive again so i think see she's suggesting that it sort of merges with this parallel universe and they somehow take it over or do these two parallel universes collide and somehow intermerge but if that's the case then White Rose and wouldn't be brought back to life. They would just be an alternate version of White Rose. So she's saying they're like merging their consciousness into. I don't really. I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't. But obviously, because we, we're all wondering what the project was. Does it have to do with time travel? And then there's also parallel universes brought. I mean, there was time travel foreshadowed throughout those Back to the Future whatnot. Now, I constantly brought up, up time travel, but this seems to have in fact, White Rose says Parallel Universe straight out. And we had that opening monologue in Season 3 where the scientist who worked at Washington Township was talking about Parallel Worlds. Um, so it's very unclear unclear what, what they're doing. So that's why a lot of my how I feel about this episode, I can't say until I see the next two episodes because it's very heavily dependent on where they're going with this. Because at the moment, it's still, I'm still confused. I still have no idea what the hell they're doing. So it really depends on if they can do something interesting with this. Um, or not. I, d I get really strong vibes of from Lost. Uh, the final season of Lost. Uh, which is not a good thing. Because the final season of Lost is not good. But you know the whole Flash Sideways things. If you've seen Lost. Where it's implied they created this parallel universe. But then at the end you find out it's just an afterlife. You know, so hopefully we don't. <laughs> Elliot doesn't find out that this isn't a parallel universe. It's just they're all in the afterlife. And they all. And Darlene and Angela and everyone goes and meet up to a church and move on to heaven. Uh, if, that, <laughs> if that happens, and fuck it, but why? That's you know, this show's not going to do that. First of all, they wouldn't copy another show like that so blatantly, and they wouldn't copy another show like that for something that everyone hated. <laughs> so obviously, that's not going to happen. I, I think Mr. Robot for another thing is much better than that, but. <laughs> I don't know. They're going to do something. Now, I'm sure, as I said at the top of the video, a lot of people, when they had that sequence and it blew up and Elliot found himself, in, or there was an alternate Elliot and it was all clean cut and different, I'm sure a lot of people were losing their minds and being upset and being like, oh, this show is not a fantasy. This show is not a sci-fi show. This is totally going against. This is a realistic show set in reality. And now all of a sudden it's changed genres. It's completely off tone. And I've talked about this throughout 
my season four reviews and even before season four started that I don't think it's too far off. I mean, yes, it is different, but it's something that's been foreshadowed throughout the entire show. Uh, so I don't think it's out of left field. I don't think it's a totally different tone shift. And I don't think, I mean, it is a tone shift, but it's not completely out of the bounds of what the show could do. Uh, because as I mentioned throughout the thing, we have a lot of things that are fantastical, like the the terrorist attack and the, the E Corp thing, and the, how they're able to do the uh, five nine hacks. And there's been a lot of real life hackers who said that realistically that could never happen, and Elliot and Darlene would not be able to pull off the things like that's not realistic, and. The whole Robin Hood thing with take, taking all the money away from this 1% of the 1%. And plus, having the data group in the first place is conspiracy of conspiracies. Like, a lot of that is a bit fantastical. Now, to be clear, Elliot finding himself in the parallel universe is way more fantastical than that. I will concede that. But, it's still not, it's still, I don't think it's that out of character for the show. If I'm being honest, and I'm, I can see this upsetting a lot of people, but hopefully even those people who are really upset will be won over by the finale. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that the finale really justifies this, that even some of the people who are upset by this episode, by the time they see the finale, they'll be like, okay, that makes sense. They're on the afterlife. <laughs> no, fuck that. Going into the church together. <laughs> no. I have more faith in Sam Esmail and Mr. Robot, and I'm really curious. I'm this is what I've been predicting all along that the, whatever time shift would happen uh, would happen before the finale. So we got two episodes left. They're both airing together. So some people will call that the two-hour finale, and this was the penultimate episode. Sure, you can say it that way. I mean. I think technically, you know, they're just showing the penultimate and the finale together next week, but whatever. However you look at it, I don't care. But, um, but yeah, I'm really, really curious to see how that goes. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I think, I think there are probably some people who are going to say that it doesn't matter what happens next week, the show sucks, it never should have done this. But I'm not in that camp at all. I'm actually really optimistic. Now, I'm also optimistic that this parallel universe, parallel world, is not going to stick. Because if they undo the events of the entire show, well, like White Rose wants to, then that would be a cheat. That would make you feel like you wasted your time as an audience member and because everything that happened was just undone and erased. But I don't think the show's going to do that. Uh, and another thing that's still a, an issue for them dress is this other personality. What's the deal with the other personality? And what's this thing that Elliot supposedly did? It seems like this parallel universe thing is kind of an aside uh, to all that. Unless, of course, this parallel universe thing is just in his head. But then, of course, the planet blew up and my rose killed herself. So was that in his head, too? So I, 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 if they say this parallel universe thing is just in his head, that would bother me as well. Uh, maybe. It depends on how they handle it. Uh, <laughs> because it wouldn't explain the plant blowing up and White Rose killing herself and all those other hints and shit that we got throughout the entire season, such as Irving talking to Angela, where Angela's like, do you really think it's possible? And Irving's like, oh, this you know, pork sandwich to a caveman would seem impossible. Like, to me, that's all foreshadowing to, to something actually happening. But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I wouldn't like the LA, it all being in Elliot's head, but... If it's not, then it's kind of an aside, and we still need to address his own issues, so I don't know how they're going to do both of those in the two-hour finale. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm very curious. I hope they don't dick around with this alternate Elliot for too long in the next episode, and they kind of get to the point of explaining what the hell they're going to end the show. This is... I mean, it was foreshadowed forever, like the whole thing with White Roses, um project, but uh, it is, I will admit, a bit out of left field for the show, but 
I don't think it disqualifies it. I don't think it's a completely... Oh, it changes the genre. It's completely fucked. It's a totally different show now. I don't think that. I think we're going to see Mr. Robot just in a completely different form than we thought. Which I think is an interesting choice. And it just better not go into a church. Anyway, <laughs> I think my rating for Exit out of 10, I think I'm going to give this episode a 9. Again, this is an asterisk next to that depending on next week's episode because if it's if they don't land this ending then that rating will go down but um i loved i think this episode was well written well shot well all the music but they had some great character interactions uh, with elliot and darling and i love the scenes with elliot and white rose i think those scenes were golden those scenes were amazing uh that's just it was so powerful and i think it does uh, it is that sort of powerful punch to an ending that you would want. Uh, so, I'm really, really curious to see where this goes. Um, anyway, that's it uh, for my review of Exit. I will be back next week to cover the two-week, two-episode finale uh, of Mr. Robot. Uh, so be sure uh, to check that out and keep an eye on, on my channel as I cover many other things like Star Trek The Expanse and more so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that thanks a lot for watching